myself pushpa valli working as a assistant professor in triple a department satya bama institute of science and technology deemed to be a university this video lecture is about basics of electromagnetics so while i am starting with electromagnetics i'll tell what are the basic terminology related to electromagnetics while giving the introduction about electromagnetic field we can study the electromagnetic field in two condition whether it may be under the stationary condition or under the moving condition whether the charge will be at rest position or will be the charge at the moving condition or in both the condition that is both electric and magnetic field will be excited by the time varying motion so while coming to electric field the charge will be at rest position so when you consider two charges q1 and q2 that are the two charges the two charges are at rest position there will be an a force existing between the charges that is said to be a, according to coulomb's law when we move with magnetic field the charge will be under the moving condition so moving condition in sense the lorentz force will comes so moving on to the coulomb's law consider two point charges q1 and q2 while considering the two charges one charge having a positive charge and another one is a negative charge means definitely between the two charges there will be an attractive force at the same time if both the charges q1 and q2 are in same magnitude uh, both are positive charges or both are negative charges definitely there will be an repulsive force between the charges so when we consider the two charges there will be a force according to coulomb's law the force is directly proportional to the magnitude of the charges that is q1 and q2 inversely proportional to the distance between the charges so while we are seeing the coulomb's law equation f equal to q1 q2 by r square okay it is directly proportional to the magnitude of the two charges and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the charges okay so while we are seeing about electromagnetics definitely there will be in a scalar term and vector term will come sir is what is scalar term means scalar term means the quantity which have only magnitude vector means the quantity which have which has magnitude as well as direction when you consider this uh, coulomb's law this force it's a definitely have an a direction as well as magnitude so when we consider about the coulomb's law the force will be, will be the vector quantity so some examples for scalar quantity are voltage current pressure temperature and all when we move on to the vector quantity the examples are force electric field intensity magnetic field intensity electric flux density these are all vector quantity so while we are moving with two charges considering q1 and q2 are the charges and the distance between the charges is r12 so we have a two condition f12 f21 what is f12 force due to q1 acting on q2 what is f21 force due to q2 acting on q1 while we considering this two forces definitely f12 will be equal to minus f21 according to the equation even though i told you already that is q1 and q2 both are same type of charges there will be repulsive force will be there opposite charges there will be attractive force will be there the unit of the force will be mentioned as um, newton electric field intensity while moving on to electric field intensity how the electric field intensity will be created so already i have mentioned the point when the charge is at rest position Uh, the electric field will be around the region the uh, definitely the electric field will be around the charges so when we consider two charges one is positive charge and another one is negative charge while you are considering the positive charge electric field line starts uh, field line starts from the positive charge when we consider the negative charge the field lines terminate at the negative charge so field lines starts from positive charge and field lines ends at the negative charge so when you look up this electric field lines this are looks like an radial lines when you see more field lines will be there the electric field strength will be very high if the field lines are very less the electric field lines will be very weak so when we see that the electric field intensity will be tangentially to the field lines always electric field intensity while we are explaining the terminology of uh, electric field intensity uh, it is defined as a force per charge so force per charge means the unit of force is newton and the unit of charge is coulomb so according to the definition of electric field intensity it is nothing but newton per coulomb so how we were saying that means you consider two charges q qt okay qt will be the test charge i'm going to find out the electric field intensity at point q so while we are find considering the point q e equal to 
e equal to force equation we know q q t by 4 pi epsilon r square divided by q t. So, that q t q t get cancelled. So, the electric field intensity formula is e equal to q by 4 pi epsilon r square. The term uh, while we are discussing that what is that epsilon? Epsilon is nothing but permittivity. What the permittivity will do means it is ability to allow the charges in a medium that is permittivity. So, the formula for electric field intensity will be q by 4 pi epsilon r square. So, the electric field intensity is inversely proportional to the distance. So, inversely proportional to the distance means if the charge if the electric field intensity is uh, closer to the charge means the electric field intensity will be very high. If the distance increases means obviously the electric field intensity will become very weak because E is proportional to 1 by R square. So, if the distance increases the electric field intensity at one particular point it will vanish. So, we have seen for a single charge at the same time we will consider for multiple charge multiple charges means n number of charges we will consider n number of charges means q1 q2 till some qn charges will be there so electric field intensity due to each and every charge there will be e1 e2 till en will be there so while we are seeing the electric field intensity around that region according to the principle of uh, superposition e equal to e1 plus e2 plus e3 till en because we are considering for n number of charges around the medium so, E equal to we know the generic formula for E. What is the formula for E? E equal to Q by 4 pi epsilon R square. So, similarly the electric field intensity we are going to consider for n number of charges. And uh, this we have considered for a point charge. Point charge means a single charge will be located and we have seen what will be the force around the charge and what will be the electric field intensity in the charge. At the same time if the charge is spread on a surface area or spread on a line or spread on a volume if you consider that is considered as a distributed charges. So, if a distributed charges are there, if you want to find out the electric field intensity, there are three kind of uh, charge densities there. One is line charge density, we represented by lambda. Another one is surface charge density, that is represented by sigma. And another one is volume charge density, that is represented by rho. So, there are three type of charges are there. While we are considering the first one, we are going to consider volume charge density and we are going to find out the electric field intensity. Volume charge density means the best example for the volume charge density is we can take the cubical structure. In the cubical structure, the charge will be spread out throughout the cubical structure. If we want to find out electric field intensity in the cub cubical structure, how we have to apply the formula? Normally, volume charge density that is rho equal to the formula is charge by volume ok. So, charge by volume means coulomb per meter cube it is a unit. So, we are going to consider one uh, cubical structure means there we have to consider a small elemental volume in all these cases we have to consider a small elemental volume or small elemental area or small elemental length. So, small elemental uh, volume in sense means if you want to find out the electric field intensity q by 4 pi epsilon r square. So, Q for Q how we will substitute means rho into dv, rho into dv by 4 pi epsilon r square ok. But already we know this electric field intensity is nothing but a vector quantity. So, we have to also consider the direction of the quantity also. So, direction in sense he have to multiply with the unit vector. So, that also we have to consider. So, the formula will become rho dv r vector by 4 pi epsilon r q. This is for a small elemental volume. If we want to find out for the entire volume or the entire structure, what we have to do? We have to apply the triple integral and we have to find out the electric field intensity. So, this is the electric field intensity due to volume charge density. While we move on to the next case that is surface charge density. Uh, surface charge density means we can consider one disk. In that particular disk, the charge is fully accumulated means if you want to find out the electric field intensity due to this surface, we have to apply the surface charge density formula or else another example we can consider. And, um, in the case means if you consider your parallel plate where the charge will be spread out. If you want to find out the electric field intensity, we can apply this uh, surface charge density and we can find out the electric field, uh, electric field intensity throughout the area. So, sigma, sigma equal to Q by del S that is coulomb per meter square. Sigma in sense means charge by area. 
okay charged by area means coulomb per meter square and if i want to find out for the entire uh, uh, electric field industry throughout the surface means we have to integrate and we have to find out the value so 1 by 4 pi epsilon double integral how we perform triple integral in volume here we have to perform a double integral to find out the electric field intensity and the next case is uh, electric field intensity due to linear charge density. Linear charge density means we can consider a straight conductor where the charge will be uh, spread out at any point. At any point means whether it may be at the center of the ring or at the mid of the ring or at one side of the ring. Any Anything if you want to find out. Again we can apply this electric field intensity due to line charge density. What is line charge density? Line charge density is lambda. Lambda is nothing but Q by L that is charge by length. So, the unit is coulomb per meter. So, consider one straight conductor where the charge will be spread out throughout the line. Okay. So, in that if we want to find out the electric field intensity, again we will apply the formula DE equal to lamb Q by 4 pi epsilon R square. Instead of Q, we have to substitute lambda into DL that is unit vector I have to consider. So, R vector by R. So, lambda DL R vector by 4 pi epsilon R Q. So, if I want to find out for the entire length of the conductor, here I have to perform a line integral to find out the electric field intensity. So, first case we consider with point charges and the next we have considered for three distribution of charges with the different type of charge density. And the next important terminology we are going to discuss will be electric flux density. Uh, going for electric flux density, we will see what is Gauss law. Gauss law, Gauss law is one of the important law to find out the electric uh, flux density in a charged object. How we were saying now in Coulomb's law, what is the uh, aim of Coulomb's law means if I want to find out any electric field intensity due to that point charge, I apply the Coulomb's law. Similarly, if we want to apply any, if you want to find out field for any charged object, we will apply the Gauss law. What is Gauss law? Uh, the normal component of electric flux density over a closed surface is equal to charge enclosed. This is Gauss law states. So, Gauss law nothing but uh, double integral of d vector dot n cap d s equal to charge enclosed that is q. So, simple way we can say d into area equal to charge that is the formula for Gauss law d into area equal to charge. So, we are want to consider any Gaussian uh, surface or any uh, uh, structure and all we have to consider one imaginary surface. What is that imaginary surface means that is said to be a Gaussian surface. So, we can for example, if you are considering one point charge in the charged object if you want to find out the electric flux density if that may be a sphere means the surface area will be 4 pi r square. If you are taking uh, the charged object is cylindrical shape. So, if you want to find out the area means we will use 2 pi r h. Uh, for example, if the Gaussian surface is not a uh, like a cylindrical or spherical in sense, it have a some other different type of structure means we will apply the calculus method. Or if it may be a parallel plate a capacitor is a rectangular means L into W. So, depending upon the Gaussian surface where the charge object is there, we have to apply that formula and we have to find out the electric flux density. So, here the generic formula I told you D into area equal to Q. In sense, if I want to find out for E, the formula is nothing but E into area equal to Q by epsilon. We know D is electric flux density. Uh, Q by area we were saying, Q by area means coulomb per meter square. D is electric flux density, E is electric field intensity. What is the relation between D and E means D equal to epsilon E. So, that we are replacing the term. Uh, d by e, e epsilon. Then the next terminology we are going to discuss will be electrostatic potential. So, electrostatic potential means consider the two points A and B. We are moving the positive test charge from A to B against the field of force. So, while we are moving against the field of force definitely the work done will be in a negative. So, work done is equal to minus F dot dl. So, F dot that is we are moving from one point to another point A to B. So, F is equal to the formula for F is F equal to Q e. We all know electric field intensity is nothing but force per charge. So, F equal to Q into e we were substituting and we can find out the work done. And when you take uh, the terminology from uh, this terminology we can explain electrostatic potential that is voltage. That is nothing but the work done per unit charge is voltage 
So, here also work done per unit charge means uh, V equal to minus line integral of A to B E dot DL. That means I am moving the work done is moving from one point to another point. So, W equal to minus integral of A to B E dot DL. When we take the closed path, it is take it as a conservative field. Conservative field the voltage value will be 0. So, while we are seeing all this, uh, there are three basic vector calculations uh, in EMT. What are the three basic vector calculations mean? Gradient, divergence and curl. So, while we are seeing about a gradient, gradient is nothing but gradient of a scalar is vector. Okay, when we consider divergence, divergence nothing but if you consider any solenoidal field, the divergence value will become 0. So, if the divergence value is greater than 0, that particular uh, object is acting as an a source. If the divergent value is less than 0, the particular medium act as an a sink. Okay, so, curl f, curl f means if I want to find out any vector, that vector is a irrotational or that the curl f is equal to 0 means we can simply state that the vector is a irrotational vector. So, the, the three basic vector cal calculus are gradient, divergence, curl and uh, the electric field we have discussed the three uh, terminologies are force, electric field intensity, electric flux density from Gauss law and then electrostatic potential that is nothing but potential difference. So, while we compare electric field and magnetic field, what are the basic laws and all? While we seeing between the two charges, there is a force will be according to Coulomb's law we have stated. Similarly, when we go on to the magnetic field, there will be an, a force if you want to find out the magnetic field intensity in a uh, current carrying conductor that is explained by biot servert's law. How here we apply the Gauss law to find out electric flux density. Similarly, Gauss law is in also magnetic field intensity. We can find out the magnetic flux density. And how we were saying here, electric field intensity is nothing but voltage by distance. That is nothing but V by L, volt per meter. Similarly, magnetic field intensity also ampere turns per meter. Okay. While we move on to this uh, electric field intensity, D equal to epsilon E. Similarly, there B equal to nu h. So, epsilon here permittivity means here the nu will be permeability. What is permeability means? It is the ability to pass the flux through the medium. Okay. So, when you consider electric field, we will consider with capacitance. What the capacitance will store means? Capacitance will store the energy in electric field. When you consider in inductance, inductance will store the energy in magnetic field. So, the energy stored in capacitor will be half Cv square energy stored in mag, uh, inductor will be half Li square. While we move on to the energy density, that is nothing but energy stored by volume. Here the formula is half Bh. Okay. So, similarly there are Poisson's equation for electric field lines, electric field as well as magnetic field. So, what this Poisson's equation will do means, it will find out the potential in a charged distribution area. And these are the electrostatic field lines and uh, magneto, electromagnetic field lines. Electrostatic field lines will be like a radial structure. So, depend here while seeing that both the charges are attracted and definitely one is in positive and another one is negative. So, the charge will be attracted and the radial lines will be there. And this is a magnetic field lines. It represents that there will be an, a concentric circles around that. Actually, this video lecture is about uh, basics of electric field we have considered and we have discussed in detail. So, we have compared both electric field and magnetic field also. In the next lecture series, we will continue with the same uh, magnetic field and we will see about the waves everything. Uh, we will have a discussion on the electromagnetic theory. Thank you.